He has something that uh, you don't find often. He wins the ball without making any foul, and straight away uh, he moves that ball forward. He's the best ball-winning midfielder I've ever seen. You can't hate him. The person who would hate this guy, you have a serious problem with yourself or something. Uh, it is an unbelievable story in Goro County. You, go, you, you could make a film as well, you think. Where better to begin Kante's story than with his name? After all, a name carries great significance in the life of an individual, and this is no exception. Named after former Malian king N'Golo Diara, a man who rose up from slavery to seize the throne, N'Golo Kante has had an incredible rise of his own on his way to conquering world football. Born to Malian parents in 1991, N'Golo grew up in a council estate in Ruel Malmaison, a small but densely populated suburb outside of Paris. His mother was a cleaner and his father was a garbage collector, and like N'Golo is today, they were both devout Muslims. Unfortunately, N'Golo's father passed away when he was 11, and so in order to help out his family, he would walk the streets of Paris, picking up rubbish to trade in. His football journey began at the age of 8 with the nearby Suren Academy, and despite his diminutive stature, his talent didn't go unnoticed. N'Golo was someone who was very courageous in terms of his size and in terms of other children who was a winner. We saw that there was something of a player who was very combative in terms of his intelligence. We saw already from the start that he was someone who was good. To understand what Kante is all about, look no further than this picture where he has just one player of the tournament and yet all the other boys are lifting up his trophy. He's just happy to be there, but make no mistake, he puts in the work. Because he was so small, he had to think smarter, run faster, and tackle harder than everybody else to make up for it. And yet still, no academy would look past his size. Even the legendary Arsene Wenger regretfully passed on him. He could have got Kante as well. Yeah, yeah. easy, because he played uh, in a club in Paris, yes. that's called Suren, where my one of my best friends is director, and he told me, Please, I have a player, you know, he's unbelievable. Nobody wants him in France. He took him in his car mm. and uh, traveled with him from club to club. And finally, a club of Division Three in France took N'Golo Kante. Wow. He had to follow the likes of Laurent Koscielny, Olivier Giroud and Franck Ribéry and make his way up through the lower leagues. And because his future was so uncertain, he studied and completed a diploma in accounting during this time, so it's no surprise he is such a quick thinker on the pitch. Thankfully, football would be the path for N'Golo, who got his break after making it to the first team at Boulogne in the French third division. Straight away, you could see he was something special, but like always, you would never have guessed it when he was off the pitch. Moi, quand je l'ai connu, il était tout seul. Donc, il était tout seul, il faisait sa petite vie tout seul. Malgré qu'on se soit bien rapproché, il était tout seul. Il allait dans son petit monde. Uh, tranquil, uh, il a besoin de personne. It wasn't long before the sporting director of Con, a second division side, was told of N'Golo's exploits in the league below. Donc, je me suis déplacé moi-même à Boulogne. C'était en Coupe de France. Euh, il avait fait un match moyen, mais franchement, on voyait qu'il avait vraiment quelque chose. Donc j'ai entamé les discussions tout de suite parce que c'était un joueur amateur à Boulogne. Il est rentré dans l'équipe et il n'est jamais sorti de l'équipe, comme tout le monde le sait. In Ligue 2, he was man of the match after man of the match, as he guided Con back to the top flight. And in Ligue 1, he had the most ball recoveries of any player in Europe. It's quite remarkable that despite setting incredible standards when it came to tackles and interceptions, other clubs weren't on the case sooner. The man who did find him was Steve Walsh, the same scout who brought Riyad Mahrez to Leicester not long before. The choice to join Leicester was an easy one. All they wanted was for him to do the same job just across the English Channel. So on the 3rd of August 2015, he signed for 9 million euros. He was the perfect bride for Claudio Ranieri's Leicester at that time, who was pivotal to the team's deep-sitting, counter-attacking system. And thanks to his incredible engine, he could do the work of two players, operating in both the defensive and the attacking unit. Unsurprisingly, his arrival didn't exactly turn heads, but it was a different story as the season progressed. The first time you saw him, did you think, wow, this kid's special? No, not, not in training. Not until, I think he played left wing or right wing in a game. And for half time, I mean, he put N'Golo in centre mid. And that second half, everyone was like, oh my God, who's this? 
Once he was in the starting lineup, he never left it. He was immense in the midfield, sparking the now famous saying, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, and the rest is covered by N'Golo Kante. Alongside Jamie Vardy and Riyad Mahrez, he was a key pillar in Leicester City's fairy tale 5,000 to 1 Premier League title, making the PFA Team of the Year and joining the aforementioned pair in being nominated for the PFA Player of the Year. By the end of the season, he had 31 more tackles and 15 more interceptions than any other player also picking up Leicester's player of the season. It was during this time that his international career began, having turned down an offer from his parents' home country of Mali the season before, in hopes to receive a call-up for France. That call came in March 2016, and a few months later he was starting in the Euros. Unfortunately though, a suspension ruled him out of the final against Portugal, as he could only watch on as his countrymen lost out to a now immortalised Ed airstrike. Not got much help. Oh, he doesn't need any help! At this point, his quality was no longer a secret, and Chelsea would secure his services for 35.8 million euros. The new number 7 would hit the ground sprinting in London, becoming the first player since Eric Cantona to win back-to-back -back Premier League titles with two different clubs. In 35 league games, he managed only one goal and assist apiece, but that didn't stop him from winning the PFA Player of the Year, the Football Writers Player of the Year, the Premier League Player of the Season, and being named in the PFA Team of the Year for a second time. It just goes to show you how much of an influence he has on the defensive side of the game. It's very, really, it's very really special to be here because uh, a few years ago I was uh, in, uh, in France, in lower division. Like five years ago, I wasn't professional, and uh, to be here with uh, to receive this kind of award, I couldn't imagine to be here. His second season with the Blues came with a Ballon d'Or nomination, as well as an FA Cup victory over Manchester United, in which Kanté was awarded the Man of the Match. At the end of the season, however. All eyes were on Russia. Coming off of the loss of his older brother Niyama to a heart attack just before the tournament, Kante soldiered on and started all seven of France's games. He formed an incredible midfield pairing alongside Paul Pogba, as they went all the way to being world champions, and soon enough, all of France was singing his name. This time around, Kante got to hold the trophy, and Steven and Zonzi made sure of it. His humility, even after winning the biggest trophy in football, makes you wonder, can he do anything wrong? This is the guy who wouldn't turn down a game of FIFA at a fan's house. When it comes to card games with the French team, however... Sometimes I was trying to, <laughs> to have a solution, so I, I was cheating at the card. You know? Yeah, he's <laughs> the he's issue said, sometimes. The, he's a human being, person, I mean. Issue. He's a normal person, so sometimes, yeah, yeah it happens. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah. After the World Cup, Kante was back on the quest to complete club football, and he signed a five-year contract in November 2018, worth a reported £300,000 per week. But unlike many other players, he opted to pay his full share of tax, having rejected Chelsea's suggestion for him to be paid through an offshore company. He ended the 2018-19 season by starting in the Europa League final, despite not being fully fit. Nevertheless, he dominated Arsenal's midfield as Chelsea won 4-1. His form drew interest from Paris Saint-Germain, but Kante had faith in the project at Chelsea, and PSG manager Thomas Tuchel would get to work with N'Golo a season and a half later when he was appointed Chelsea manager in January of 2021, taking over from Frank Lampard, and it was a perfect match. N'Golo is incredible. He's like one and a half or two players. I mean, everybody who sees him for the first time loves him. And uh, all my family love, love, love him when they, when they watch our games now. <laughs> so, so It's so, so nice to have him. He wins so many balls, he gives everybody confidence. Chelsea were having a good Champions League run. And as the stakes got higher, Kante got better, winning three men of the match awards en route to the final, with two of those coming against Real Madrid in both legs of the semi-final. The final itself would see them face off against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City in Porto. Ladies and gentlemen, it's match day. And Golo, like always, was everywhere, breaking up City's attacks as Chelsea would go on to win the match 1-0, with Kante being awarded the man of the match, cementing his status as a big game player, while checking off the most important club trophy. Well, he's won everything now, oh. everything that arguably really matters. The, arguably the best in that position ever to play the game. I played with Maka, who I thought was the best in that position until I see this kid. It almost seems as if he doesn't know how good he really is. How would you evaluate the performance of the team and of course your own performance, you're the man of the match? No, we are very happy, very proud. It's uh, the, the result of a lot of effort together, some good results, some bad, but we stay together 
We did very well in the second part of the season and we enjoyed this title all together. For his performances throughout the season, Kante was named the UEFA Men's Midfielder of the Year, but lost out to Chelsea teammate Jorginho for the UEFA Men's Player of the Year. N'Golo continued to fill up his trophy cabinet the following season, winning the UEFA Nations League and the UEFA Super Cup, and most recently, he added the Club World Cup in 2022. And that is how this humble king conquered the world of football. There has never been a player like him, nor has there ever been a player more likeable than him, often overlooked throughout his life. It's clear now who gets the last laugh. <laughs> I'm not going to